DEI flows in the time of COVID-19. Foreign direct investment can play an important role in helping countries both address the pandemic and to recover following it. We know from evidence from past crises that foreign-owned firms can be more resilient than domestic firms, and this is largely due to the financial linkages that they have with their parents. However, the role of FDI can go beyond just financing. Multinational enterprises tend to be larger, more R&D intensive, and more productive than purely domestic firms. This means that they could help countries deal with the effects of the pandemic, say by pioneering ways to help us work safely, but they also can help in the recovery because they have important direct and indirect impacts on host economies. And this includes on their employment, wages, production, and trade. We also know that actions taken by policymakers can impact FDI flows. And so at this time, they really need to have up-to-date information on FDI flows, as well as some ideas about possible future developments to help guide their decision making. Unfortunately, there is a lag in the official FDI statistics. It's usually about three months. We used information from commercial data sources, in this case, Refinitiv, which covers earnings of, of companies as well as mergers and acquisitions, and Financial Times, which has a database of greenfield projects. And we use that along with our FDI statistics database to both now cast and forecast FDI statistics. So when we look at the current situation, which we are defining as the first half of 2020, we expect a steep drop in FDI flows. And we focused on the two main components of FDI, which are reinvested earnings and equity capital flows. Together, these account for more than four-fifths of FDI flows. And we looked at them separately because we think that they'll respond differently over time and under different scenarios. So we do expect a fall in reinvested earnings. So these are the earnings that the direct investor chooses to reinvest in their affiliate rather than, than take out of the affiliate. And this is determined by the earnings of the affiliate as well as the share that the direct investor chooses to reinvest. So in the first half of 2020, we expect the earnings of many large M&Es to fall, but it does vary greatly across sectors. So when we looked at the information from Refinitiv, we have found that they expected large year-over-year -year drops in earnings in the energy consumer discretionary sector, which includes a lot of travel and entertainment spending, as well as retail trade, and the industrials and materials sectors, which covers a lot of manufacturing, intermediate inputs, and um, other commodities. But there were some sectors where they actually expected earnings increases, and those included healthcare, technology, and communications. So what this means is that countries also will be impacted differently depending on how important these different sectors are for FDI. And in particular, we expect developing economies to be particularly hurt because they tend to have more FDI in the primary and manufacturing sectors than the developed economies where services, which might be holding up better, tend to be more important. We also expect the share of earnings that investors choose to reinvest to fall. So typically this lies between 40 and 50 percent, but as you can see looking historically, when we look back at 2008 and 2009, which was the global financial crisis, there was actually a big drop in the share that was reinvested. So in 2007 it was about 44 percent, in 2008 it fell to 24 percent. The other component of um, FDI flows that we looked at were equity capital flows, and these are tied to new investments, including uh, mergers and acquisitions and greenfield investments, but they're also influenced by divestments. And here we expect these also to fall. So if you look at the first chart, this shows the relationship between completed M&A deals and equity capital flows from 2005 to 2019. And what you see is that they do tend to move together. 
Uh, the lower chart shows the quarterly completed M&A deals all the way back to 2000 from Refinitiv. And what you can see in the first quarter of 2020 is that they were at the lowest level we've seen all the way back to 2000. However, what we're seeing is evidence that these deals are being put on hold rather than abandoned. So you can imagine it's very difficult right now for companies to establish valuation, so they might be reluctant to complete a deal, but they're not completely abandoning them because that can also be costly. And we also looked at developments in announced greenfield projects. And here there's also a decline. So if you look at the chart, we're showing the monthly announced cross-border greenfield investments from 2018 through March 2020. And in both the OECD on the left and the non-OECD countries shown on the right, these deals fell, particularly in March and they are lower than what we've seen in the same three months in, in 2018 and 2019. So this will also add to a drop in equity capital flows. Now, divestments can also have an impact on FDI flows. This is when a company chooses to sell off or liquidate a foreign affiliate, and this is a normal part of operations. Companies are constantly doing this. What it does is actually reduce the equity capital flows. Now, we know from our research that the financial health and debt levels of m and are important drivers of international divestment. So we do tend to see them increase during crises. And we saw this when we looked back at 2008. However, they were then followed by a wave of foreign acquisitions that were done by firms who were able to buy assets at attractive prices. So then we wanted to look at what would happen in the second half of 2020 through the end of 2021. And we considered three scenarios for the success of the public health and economic policy support measures that countries have taken. So under the optimistic scenario, which is the, the top line, we find that the public health and economic support measures taken are very effective and the economy starts to grow again in the second half of 2020. Even so, we still expect FDI flows to fall between 30 to 40% in 2020 before returning to pre-crisis levels by 2021. Under this scenario, earnings return to their pre-crisis levels as the economy recovers and the share of earnings that are reinvested returns to historical levels. Equity capital flows recover as almost all of the previously announced M&As and Greenfield projects are completed. Well, there might be a drop in the future because they're not really deals being negotiated right now, we do see deal making uh, return to normal relatively quickly. And under this scenario, divestment remains at its historical levels. We next considered a middle scenario, which is the, the dashed line in the chart. Under this scenario, the public health measures and economic recovery policies are only partially effective, and we expect FDI flows to fall 35 to 45 percent in 2020 before recovering somewhat in 2021. However, they would still remain about one third below pre-crisis levels. While earnings in some sectors recover, they remain below pre-crisis levels in others, as does the share of earnings reinvested. Uh, equity capital flows will be subdued as the announced M&A deals and greenfield projects that still make strategic sense are completed, but more deals are abandoned. In addition, there's a continuing slump in new deals uh, despite the fact that there will be some foreign acquisitions at attractive prices by financially stronger firms. Divestments by firms that are struggling financially would also put downward pressure on equity capital flows. And then we consider the pessimistic scenario, which is the solid line, the lowest line. Under this scenario, the public health and economic policy measures taken are not effective and the uh, global economy settles into a lingering recession. Here we would expect FDI flows to drop by more than 40% in 2020 and that they would remain flat until the end of 2021. Uh, earnings remain depressed and so does the share of earnings that are reinvested. Equity capital flows would be significantly reduced as many of the announced M&A deals and greenfield projects are called off and there are very few new M&As and greenfield investments being um, negotiated. And divestments by struggling firms would be more common, including more liquidations.
So this analysis was published as one of the notes that the OECD has been publishing on policy responses to the COVID-19 pandemic. For more information, you can see the other notes that we have published on investment in the time of COVID-19. Thank you for your attention.